All right, you guys. So this week is baguettes. Um, so we're gonna do a normal baguette, and then I'm gonna show you a decorative baguette called an epi baguette, where you cut it to make it look like a stalk of wheat. Um, I mixed my baguette dough, and I let it, uh, I covered it, and I let it, uh, it's called retarding. I let it sit in the fridge overnight to do the, that first bulk fermentation stage. Um, so what you wanna do is mix it for six minutes. So if you have a KitchenAid mixer, mix it on speed two for about six minutes until it forms a smooth dough like this. Um, if you don't have a KitchenAid mixer, you're gonna knead it until it comes together. That's what I did on this, um, just to see how long it would take. So I just mixed it in the bowl with my hands. And then once it came together into a ball, I just put it out on the table and I kneaded it. So remember, pick it up and push it into itself and you're gonna keep moving it, picking it up and pushing it into itself until it forms a smooth ball. So that took me about seven, eight minutes, okay? So you guys are gonna need bread flour for this. Again, I just bought what I could find at the store. So this is bread flour Safeway brand. Most stores will have a bread flour. The Bob's Red Mill bread flour is awesome. King Arthur bread flour is awesome. Remember, bread flour is higher in gluten, higher in protein, um, so you want that to provide the structure for your bread. So don't skimp out and do all-purpose flour. Get a bag of bread flour. This was $1.50 at the store and it's five pounds, so um, good deal. And then the yeast you're gonna use is an instant yeast. I grabbed a packet this morning just to show you. Um, so this one says Rapid Rise on it. There's another brand that says Quick Rise, but you wanna make sure that it says instant yeast on it. If it doesn't say instant yeast, um, then keep looking. The dry active won't work as well as the instant. The instant is what you want. Um, and it'll happen faster, which I know you guys like. Um, and you'll have better results from it. So instant yeast. Boop, 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 see? Okay. So for shaping the baguette, um, you guys are gonna do the burrito roll much like what you do with the butter braids. So this dough's a little bit stickier, but it shouldn't be too bad. So you're gonna flatten it out. So I did um, a one and a half times the recipe that I have up for you guys. So flatten it out. Uh, fold over the ends, pinch up the top. This one's a little more important. Um, roll it over, pinch off the seam to make sure that you're going fingertip to palm um, because you wanna make sure you're getting out any of those air pockets that are built up in there. Those air pockets will stay. And so when you cut into your bread, you'll have a long tunnel down the end of it. Um, and that's what you don't want. Um, so these are gonna proof for an hour. So they've had the bulk fermenta fermentation stage overnight and doing it overnight is just gonna get more flavor, almost as if um, you're adding a starter to it. Um, so it'll have a lot more flavor on it. So once you are ready, pull the dough out of the refrigerator, let it come up to temperature for about an hour, um, just on the countertop and then portion it out. Remember when you're portioning it out, you wanna use something to cut it. So if you don't have a butter cutter at home, you can use a knife is fine. Just don't cut on your parents' nice countertops with a knife. Um, just anything that will cut it, don't rip it, okay? It's ripping it will rip the gluten strands. So you wanna roll it out, fingertips to palm all along here, and then you wanna taper the ends just a little bit, and then put it onto your tray. So most of you are not gonna have a huge tray like this at home. So just do little halves of these as long as you can fit them onto your, the baking sheets that you have at home um, and give it just a little bit um, on the ends so they can grow. And they'll grow, they'll about two and a half times the volume. So I'm gonna do that on this one too. So flatten it out, fold in the sides, pinch up, fold over, pinch off the sides, fingertips to palms and make sure your fingertips are getting in there to press out any of those air pockets that are in that baguette. I definitely sent baguettes back um, to Grand Central because they have big air pockets in them and you're trying to uh, not only smooth this out and make it a nice um, rounded off baguette but you're trying to get those air pockets out and then you're going to taper those ends. The tapered ends is a very French way of making a baguette So if you end up 
like this is a little bit skinnier than this. So just kind of roll the fatter portion into there. So then I'm gonna put it on the tray. And once you put it on the tray, you can kind of take your hands like this and go down to make it um, straight. So I'll do one more to fit on the tray. Pinch up, roll over, pinch off the seam. So if you're doing little smaller ones, you might need two trays for this. Um, if you don't feel like you're gonna eat all the bread at home, just do a half recipe. I'm gonna show you how to do an epi baguette with some of these. So if you're gonna do epi and the normal baguette, then you wanna have two different trays because they'll cook a little bit differently. make sure try to make sure they're equal all the way through just like that and then again get them on the tray you want them to be the same size and use your hands to kind of do that to straighten them out um, I'm at school so I have the fan in the oven so I need to make sure they're on both ends but that's what they're gonna look like I'm gonna cover them loosely with plastic wrap um, if your dough is really sticky I would dust a little bit of flour on top not the worst idea anyways, because it'll be decorative. Once your baguettes are um, out of the oven, you'll see that flour. So dust a little bit of flour on top, cover them with plastic wrap, and let them sit for an hour. Okay, I'll be back. All right, you guys, I'm back. So my baguette sat for an hour, so they've doubled in size. So I'm gonna show you two different ways. So you need to score them no matter what. Um, either you're gonna score them putting the slashes that I'm gonna show you, or you're gonna score them doing the epi, the wheat stock. So to do this, I use a serrated knife. That's gonna be the easiest way for you guys. So the bread knife with the teeth, the easiest way for you guys to do it at home. Um, I like to brush a little bit of water onto my baguettes so that they steam when they go in the oven. I'm gonna do this again before they go in. You don't want them dripping with water because then they're gonna stick to the tray. You just want enough to where they look glistened. Plus this is gonna help the knife go through a little bit easier when you score it. So when you're scoring it, you're gonna um, go at an angle like this. We're gonna do four scores, um, four scores from um, end to end. So I'm gonna go score. So you want it to go about a quarter of an inch deep and you're just going in really fast because if you think about it too much, you're gonna drag your knife. So you want it to go end to end. So one, two, three, four. And the French like it, so, so these are called ears, so you can pick up where you scored, if that makes sense. But you don't wanna go, um, so try to go about quarter of an inch deep. If you go all the way through, your baguette's gonna split. But this is gonna take practice too. And remember, just go kind of fast but watch, be mindful of where your other hand's at so you don't um, slice it. But if you don't go fast and you just are really careful, that it's just, you see how that's doing that? It's just gonna drag through and it's not gonna look as pretty. Okay, so those are ready. I'm gonna do a really light once over with the water again, just to get those score marks, a little bit of water in there. So this is gonna help steam it. So it's gonna have the crispy outside, the crispy crunchy outside with the soft inside. So that's a really easy way to do it unless your oven has a steamer option. So I'm going in the oven at 450. Um, my oven is convection and those will take about 10 minutes in there. So this one's fun, this is an epi baguette. Um, so epi is, um, means it's uh, supposed to look like a wheat stock. So I'm, again, I'm gonna brush it with a little bit of water just to make it easier to cut. I need a pair of sharp scissors. So find um, the sharpest scissors that you have. And this one's fun, but it does take a little bit of practice. I haven't done it that much, so I'm not um, super great at it either. But I know you guys, you'll pick it up right away and show me up, but. Okay, so a little bit of water. And then you're gonna take your scissors at a 45 degree angle and about two inches from the top cut, but you're not gonna cut all the way through. And then you're gonna move it over. So that little ear over. 
You're gonna come down about two inches, snip it just at the top and scooch that over. So you're going about a quarter inch from the bottom. So snip it, 45 degree angle, come over. And remember, you're coming in like this, at an angle about like this. And every time, you're gonna scoot it to either side. If you come in more like this, you're not gonna get the long pieces. You're gonna get kind of funny looking pieces. So come in at an angle almost like that. And as you do it, you'll kind of see. And you can do, I'll show you in a second, you can do, um, ooh, I almost cut through on that one. Um, you can do longer and shorter ones if you wanna make it look more artistic. So that's what it looks like. But if you wanted to, you could come in same way, a big one, and then you could do a shorter one on the other side, just a baby leaf on the other side, a big one, and then a baby leaf on the other side. Um, however you wanna do it, you could go back and forth, um, but have fun with it, be artistic, like I know you guys are. Um, so yours won't be as long as mine, because I have the big trays at school. But then you're gonna take a little bit of water and lightly brush the tops again. It's also gonna go into a hot oven. You want that hot oven so it steams right away, um, so you get the nice golden brown outside, crunchy outside, and soft inside. So I'll come back and show you what these guys look like when they're out. All right, you guys, baguettes and epi baguettes are out. So these are what the epi baguettes look like coming out of the oven, so nice color. If you were to take, if you're curious of if they're done, if you were to take a thermometer and go under, uh, you remember you wanna do it on the underside, it would reach um, 200 degrees in the center, if that makes sense. So come under it and then um, test it, so 190 to 200 degrees. But you want it to be crunchy on the outside, remember, um, and this nice golden brown. Okay, so those are the epi ones, and then, the just straight up baguettes are done as well. And so those look like that. So nice, um, I can hold on to the ears. Um, so nice slash marks, hopefully you uh, can see that. Remember, they're not gonna be, um, well, knowing you guys, they'll be magical the first time. But if they don't look great the first time, just keep practicing. Hope you like them.